Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. BJ the Brave here, back with some more Warforged content for you. And today, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the Sisters of Battle and basically some ideas on, on um, where, where, what I think can be done to improve the faction. And also, we just had a patch last week, so I wanted to give a little bit of, you know, just kind of like my thoughts on where they are as a faction. Uh, so the first thing to say is that um, I actually think the patch was a really good one, so good job EG, uh, really helped take the faction which was severely underpowered and had a lot of issues on release, um, quite the opposite to when the Tau Empire came out which was uh, almost the opposite side of the spectrum. Uh, and so I would say that uh, the, the the direction they went in was a good one, It was uh, they got patched out quick, which I like, and they didn't kind of uh, swing the seesaw from one end to the other so they they went for some quite subtle improvements and overall I think they were really good they've certainly made uh, they've certainly made the faction more playable um, nowhere near tier one still but um, they are now playable they're not you know Erica was somewhere right at the bottom of their last meta report for example by a by a considerable margin as well some like a 25 percent win so, uh, yeah, the buffs have definitely been a positive move in the right direction. Um, so, I still think we can go a little bit further with the sisters. They have some fun mechanics. The warlords are really well designed, um, but I do think that the uh, the execution's still not quite there, and there's still a few things that are um, just kind of lacking in the overall game plan. Or sisters. I'm not saying we need to kind of push them to be kind of broken tier one over the top, but I just think it's more about kind of just kind of tying the faction together and making some of the archetypes that you want to make as a deck builder work. So uh, what I want to do in this video is just kind of go through my suggestions for some improvements that can really fix sisters and really uh, bring that to life. Obviously, guys, take it with a pinch of salt. This is my opinion. I've spoken to a few members of the community as well, obviously, but, um, you know, it's it's an opinion, right? So uh, take it for what it is. Uh, now, I've played quite a lot of Marven and Erica, not so much with Junith, who I think is absolutely the worst of the three Warlords. Um, and I actually think Erica has perhaps got potential to be one of if not my favorite warlord in the game like she's got that potential but it's the it's the rest of the faction it's the cards around her that that, that need a little bit of work uh, so let's let's dive in and have a look the first thing i want to talk about is the um it is the actual stratagems themselves because there's a few things here that are really holding sisters back the first thing is the raging storm if you're watching EG, um, if you if you want to turn the video off after this one, then by all means go ahead. If there's one thing I absolutely feel passionately about, and almost anyone I've met talked to in the community says the same, is this card is this card needs to change as fast as possible. This this is a bad card does not do do it justice because this is kind of handicapping the entire faction, or at least it's handicapping uh, Junith from ever being played, and it's it's really badly handicapping uh, Erica. It doesn't handicap Marvin too much because Marvin tends to play for more of a kind of control um, approach, so she's not really bothered about her units being short because she just wants to clear the board every turn. And actually, you're kind of doing her a favor by making your own units easier to remove. But for Erica and for uh, Junith, who are trying to build boards and heal and all this sort of stuff, add health to units, this is catastrophic. And um, I just don't think offense cards should um, should kind of essentially eradicate a game before it's even played. It feels really bad. Like the the you know forget the logic of it. Like just 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 loading into a game as sisters seeing your opponent select to this makes you want to not just resign from the game but turn warp forge off and go outside and get some fresh air so that is not a good thing for the game uh, <laughs> so this needs to change uh, how you want to change it i don't know my one suggestion i i had is that uh, it could be something like uh, a lot of the offense cards talk about when skulls are required so it could be something like you know um oh 
when, when, when you gain a skull, for example, then you suffer minus one health. Uh, some, something like that. Or, you know, units on the board suffer one damage, something like that. Um, it's, you know, because then it's like the idea that a you know, skull's been thing and a storm has hit and it's a storm passes, right? So um, I think something like that would be a lot more reasonable and we still have the spirit of the card, but it's something that at least both players can kind of play around a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, so I definitely think that this card it should be top of the please change as fast as possible. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, so next up we've got also on the stratagems, we have got this card. Now, Guidance of the Saints is really interesting. It says your next infantry costs two less. So it doesn't apply to vehicles, doesn't apply to spells. Um... However, we do play a lot of infantry and sisters, and this is potentially a really great defense strategy, probably the best one uh, in the faction. Now, the problem is, is that it's sitting behind the level 40 forge, and um, I don't know what the rules are. I don't know if there's been an example of where they've changed the position of something on the forge yet. I can't think of one if it has. Let me know in the comments if, if I'm wrong, uh, but I would... I would love to see this be a little bit more accessible to people, e.g. if that's possible, because I kind of think what you do with Disruption Pool on the Tyranids is kind of like the best, uh, you know, the, the happy medium, right? It's like, okay, you've got you've got to commit to the faction, you've got to kind of like earn a fair bit to get to level 20 on the Forge, and then you get to unlock this really cool thing that's kind of transformed the way the faction plays in the Disruption Pool. So I kind of think that level 20 on Forge is kind of like a nice spot to have the best defense card level 40 is um it's it's, it's too much i think to ask, ask of uh, you know the, the average player uh, to, to get to only the most um, dedicated or the big spenders for example are going to have a chance of getting it so a great card i just think it needs to be a little bit more accessible and that could also help what is essentially a slightly underpowered faction uh, as well all right, so uh, let's talk about Junith. Now, Junith can heal a friendly unit, and that is not anywhere near as good as Erika's give plus one health to you, right? Erika can go above the starting number, Junith can't. So I, um, I, I immediately think she's behind there. So what does her talent do? Well, Lead the Righteous says, uh, deploy a battle sister. Now, uh, the battle sister is um, obviously a prey unit, and the turn that this gets deployed, she has to basically survive, and then she's got to not attack in the next turn to prey. She'll get the plus one, plus one immediately, but then she's going to survive again to get the faith point. So, what exactly is the point here? Um, what you're doing is you're putting down, I guess, three health that your opponent has to remove, and if they choose to do that, then that's they've got to get through that before they can hit your warlord, disrupt the prayer. So I kind of get that. I understand that mechanic, and I'm happy with that, but I just think it's too slow. So um, something needs to change here. Now, one idea that I had is that uh, her ability could, could read something like deploy a battle sister and immediately put it into prayer. So rather than her having to wait a whole nother turn to pray the talent itself puts the battle sister into prayer mode so it's like it's been deployed with flank and prayed instantly something like that would be really cool you could just give it flank but i think that might be too powerful like having having flank and the ability to just have a two yeah a, a two damage flanker with three health every single time i think that would be too powerful but I think if you could just somehow put it into prayer immediately, that would certainly, uh, that would really, I think that would help Junith be what Junith's designed to be, which is to be the tempo warlord, right? It's now all of a sudden you've got to deal with that. It's suddenly a 2-3 and it's in prayer mode. Love that. So, um, yep. Um, I don't know whether it'd be, I don't know whether it would seem to be too powerful. Um... I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but as it is currently, this is definitely the worst Warlord, probably the worst Warlord in the game, to be honest. 
so some of these changes that I'm suggesting are kind of bigger and smaller than the others. Uh, I think the Beacon of Faith is is a, is a good card. I kind of like to see this Faith re reduced to five. Six is, six is very, very high. I like the idea of this card, though, where for, for, for cheap, you've kind of got a, an ability, and then you have a Faith cost that basically means that late in the game, uh, there's a payoff for having build, built Faith. So uh, it's a bit like kind of how Companion works with Tower. Like, you can drop a unit early, and then if you get it in the late game, you get you get to deploy the companions as well. So the card kind of expands and it doesn't just become useless. And that's a real problem that sisters have, by the way, particularly in the three drops. If you look at the three drops, uh, let's take this card, for example. If you get this card on E3, which is turn two, that's it's a great card to draw. It's really good. If you get this card later in the game, it's absolutely useless. It's absolutely rubbish, guys. It's like it's contributing nothing to the game. So this is another one where I feel like uh, it, it needs to have a a faith um, a faith payoff, right? Like faith five does something else. Could be draw a card, or I'd like to see it have more of an impact on the board. It could be something like gives plus one health to units if you've got faith five, something like that so that it has a late game payoff. Those are the fun cards in the sisters, the ones that that make the gaining faith have an actual payoff. And this has this does nothing in the late game at all. Uh, okay, so next up, I'm gonna talk about an NS. Now, uh, one of the things about the sisters is they, they generally don't have very well statted units and i think the canon s has the opportunities to kind of be that card for the for the faction to be that kind of solid statted unit and i think that will be a really nice role for the canon s but they currently are only half onto it with the execution i think what i'd really love to see here is um that the armor is what you gain for getting three faith i think armor three armor on three faith would be fantastic and then I'd, what I'd like to see is this, instead of being 6 faith, probably being 5 faith for the second level, and 5 faith then giving the plus 1, plus 1. So we're really just swapping these around and maybe reducing this 6 faith to 5. Uh, at the very least, I'd love to see those swapped around, um, because I think I think getting the armor kind of makes it the, you know, the decent, the sort of decent, sort of sticky unit, if you like, of the faction. Um, I also, also while we're on the five drops, we've got the Magnifier. I just think this card, again, like this idea that you can play this and then you have to survive, and then next turn you pray, it gives flank to a unit. It's just a little bit slow, and the stats aren't good, right? For a five drop, this can get removed real easily. Uh, five health's not amazing. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not amazing for a five, and it's... Uh, it's not stealth, so it's basically going to be trading for three, and that's just really underpowered at the five level. So, what I'd kind of like to see here is um, six health uh, given, or or alternatively put it down to four health and give it a shield. I'd I'd rather see that than than the five, but I think per preferably I'd, I'd kind of like to see it have six health, um, and then also. Uh, I'd like to see it gain one point on the damage. So you could either make that a 5-3 if you wanted to have the uneven stats, or you make it a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, that would be, I, I'd love to see it sort of, a bit like the Dialogus has the 3-3 three, three at, at, at foreign energy. Yeah, what they did with the Dialogus. Maybe they do it similar to this, but they make it like one bigger. So it becomes a 4-4 four, four and a 6. And then I think we might start to see that card as a, as a vile watch. And right now, though, it's just way too understated. It's just going to contribute to you falling behind on tempo, which is something that sisters uh, really struggle with if you don't build the deck uh, particularly well. Uh, the next thing is Defenders of the Faith. I think this card, because again, Battle Sisters are just poor, and I'd like to say, sim similar to what I said with Junith, I, I wonder whether you could uh, deploy the Sisters and they, they go into Faith immediately. Um, now, I, I I think like having multiple Faith dealers all of a sudden that you're, that you're sorry, multiple prayers all of a sudden, your opponent's going to really struggle to remove them all. I think that would 
be very cool and it would kind of play into because that's kind of how it works right you have to you have to try and get multiple things praying you're knowing your opponent's going to disrupt some of them but hope that they can't disrupt all of it so that would actually make this card playable uh and then i also want to talk about shrine world this is a card i'm desperate to play and uh I kind of don't like it. They, they had a nice thing going on previously that was a bit like uh, Reclaim the Scar Stars from the Eldari, which was basically that it drew cards and made them cheaper. Now, they've kind of changed direction with the card a little bit. They kind of wanted it to become a faith generator. I uh, don't mind that. I don't mind it. But um, I think if you're going to do that, that this should only cost five. I think I think it just costs too much at six because the other thing is that to gain the faith it's got to draw troops and that is a that is a huge that is a hugely restricting thing because we have to design the whole deck now around around troops in order to get to that whereas if you made it five you might see it in more mixed builds because like okay I didn't draw three troops so maybe I got one or two faith but Kind of got in three cards for five it feels a little bit more reasonable whereas if you draw three for six you you really need to be getting three faith from that so yeah I'd, I, if you're going to keep it with this kind of approach um I'd, I'd like to see that kind of maybe reduced to uh to, to five energy especially when you think about like the um version in empire from tau I, you know that draws three cards and by the time you're playing that you can get that for like anything from zero to sort of two usually so this is just feeling like you're paying such a premium to get a bit of card draw. Uh, now the Celestium Superior is... Uh, this one, yeah. Uh, again, um, I kind of said in a previous video that I think that when you come to the big units, the expensive units, seven energy is expensive. I don't really want to see prey on these units. You cannot spend seven energy on a unit and then the next turn, if you're lucky enough for it to survive, not attack and swing with these stats, these big beefy stats that it's got that's doing nothing. The only way these stats matter if you can't attack is if you've got a vanguard, right? So it doesn't make any sense. It's too late to be praying with these types of units. What we want from the big units is them being the payoff uh, for all the faith building. So I think what this, what I'd suggest here is that this changes to, um, that becomes like a rally effect, deploy a Celestian, or uh, probably more fitting with sisters would be that it deploys a Celestian if you've got a certain faith level, right? So like, you know, faith level three, deploy a Celestian, uh, faith level, maybe even something like faith level six, uh, deploy uh, a Celestian with um, already into, Pray mode, if that's something that we can we can easily program. All right, so the next card that for me needs some work still is probably the Immolator. It's another one. We're into that eight energy, and it's that thing again, guys, where um, it just doesn't do anything on the turn that it comes down. Uh, the other thing is that if you look at its uh, Prey ability. It says deal three damage to an enemy and its adjacent units. And then when you when you attack, it does blast two. So it's kind of like, um, why would I pray here, right? So I can basically swing and do six damage and then do two two things that are on the opposite side. Or instead of swinging for six, I can just increase that blast. Essentially, do three damage instead of two damage. Why why would we why would we pray and do that? And also we've kind of already got this card right in this in the form of the um that ability, sorry, in the form of the cleansing flames, which everybody runs two of. So to me it's kinda of like I just don't see the point of this card at all. And I, I know that from playing the from, from collecting um and the tabletop war game that the immolator is it is more of a kind of like anti AoE type of thing. Um but but this 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 ain't it for me. I wonder whether it could we could make this be like a bit more of an anti armor card. That could be kind of interesting. But I, the main thing for me is it kind of needs to do something on uh, on deploy. Now instead of where it says where it says 
spray deal three damage to an enemy and it's adjacent units what if that was faith so if that was say like a payoff which i think we need by the way if i've not made it clear one of the things the factions need is more payoff for gaining faith so in the late game in particular so i would like to see this say something like faith six deal three damage to an enemy and its adjacent units so it has a deploy effect i think that would be really really good and make much more sense then because in the following turn we would want to swing to get the blast rather than choosing between that and the prayer all right so next up i want to talk about the triumph of saint catherine this card's really it's really cool she's not quite there for me so um i've got a really simple one for this which i think would make it uh really great and a really great late legendary to kind of play into the faction which is just very very simple simply um I'd kind of like to see it uh, give some health to the Warlord. So it could just be give three health to the Warlord, uh, heal the Warlord by three or heal the Warlord by five maximum. But even if it just said on deploys, heal your Warlord by three and then the same, same ability. So now uh, it's giving us like, it's becoming basically the defense, the defense card, right? The kind of late game defense card we get the armor we get some heal i think that would be i think that would help it's just not quite there uh but it's close so heal three i'd be happy with that i would be really happy with that all right next up we've got the exorcist now this card first of all 10 out of 10 for the artwork superb and it's begging to be played it's got a pretty cool ability the problem is with eight faith is that let's say we've worked hard all game we get to turn 10 energy 10 and we've got seven faith. This card does nothing. It's the big steaming pile of uselessness. So, and that just feels a bit like, oh, man, we, we, we got seven faith and it does nothing. I feel like we need this to be a scaling card. Lots of people in the community have talked about this and made this suggestion. So ideally it would, it would have a, a kind of scaling effect, which would be something like, you know, for every two points of faith, it does one damage to all enemies. Yeah. So if we've got uh, two, we do one damage to everything. If we've got four, we do two damage to everything. Uh, right up until what, what we currently have. Uh, if that seems like too much work to change, I would even settle for it just saying, just adding uh, half of this. So if it also had a four faith, I can say that four faith deal two damage to all enemies, like a storm raven for four faith. Just so we've got two levels of, of faith gate, but ideally I think the scaling effect would, would be awesome and that would, that would make this card really cool. Could even go higher than dealing four damage, you know, if you've got ten faith, you deal uh, uh, five damage. If you've got twelve faith, you deal six damage. Why not? If you've managed to gather that amount. This is costing us ten energy, guys. So really, really love uh, the Exorcist if they can address this problem it's it's a real problem for the card i mean it's really holding it back but, and this is the thing it's like a lot of sisters cards they're so close on the design idea it's almost really cool but it's just not quite cool and instead it ends up being frustrating so uh again this this is a big one this is a big one because a lot of community are talking about this and to to if we can get this right and make the kind of big 10 energy card work the faction then that massive payoff all game is going to feel fantastic uh so yeah that's what i want to see so yeah i mean to be honest guys there are other cards uh i do think that the three drops are particularly uh a problem in terms of the curve so when you look at where is the deck weakest it's got pretty good four drops now some decent five drops particularly if they address the cannon cannon s uh, the six drops are very good in the faction uh, but the three drops are a problem now they did boost the celestian and that's helped a little bit uh obviously we do have a legendary if we've collected that but in terms of units i do think that um these cards are lacking a little bit the the assassin and the repentia just act a bit like road bumps they can both be taken out because they have zero range attack and the similar the simulacrum bearer is okay if you play it on three but it's terrible if you play it late game so I, I would also like them to just maybe have a little look at the three 
drop units and see if there's anything they can do to make some of the units a little bit more viable there. I think if they make these changes that I've suggested today, that the faction will be uh, a super fun faction to play, and it will be you will be able to design multiple different decks, different archetypes that will be somewhat competitive. I still don't think they'll be kind of like anywhere near the power level tower we're at. I don't think they'll be like dominating the game, but they'll they'll be competitive and they'll feel really good to collect and play. So uh, if you're watching EG, I hope that helps. And let me know in the comments if uh, if there's any others that you think I've missed that you'd really like to see. I know some people have talked about some of the cards being a bit, a bit bugged. So uh, one, for example, is the Stern. This says it deals two to three damage. I've checked with the community and no one has seen it do three damage. I've played a lot with this card and I've never got, that should be a 50-50, I've never got three damage with it. I always only get two damage and... I'm wondering whether it's a programming bug so there's a few bugs that still need to be sorted out but i think if we make those changes that i've, I've suggested today this could be a really cool faction to play let me know what you think like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one